You can send unlimited emails using this free SMTP mail server. I use Virtualman web-based control panel to host a free SMTP server on the Oracle Cloud. Virtualman is an open source control panel and Oracle Cloud provides free VPS for the server. All commands and guidelines are provided, you don't have to enter them manually. Step 1. Requirements. Before going to the process, you have to fill in two requirements. The first one is you have to register on Oracle Cloud. It is a very easy task. If you have trouble with the registration process, please watch this video. It explained how to register on Oracle Cloud step by step. The second one is you have to get a top level domain for this. It is better for SMTP servers. Check the video description. I will provide the best domain name providers with their discount codes for you. You can try to get a free domain from Freenom, but it is not good for SMTP servers. After fulfilling these requirements, you can go to the next step. Step 2. Set up the VPS on Oracle Cloud. After logging into the Oracle dashboard, click the Create a VM Instance button to start. You can name your instance using any name. Under Image and Shape, click Edit to change the OS of the instance. Click the Change Image button. Here, select Canonical Ubuntu 24.04 as your operating system, not the minimal version. Under Networking, check whether you select Create New Virtual Network and Create New Public Subnet. I missed that part here. You have to add the SSH key to the VPS. Select the Paste Public Key option to add the keys. I use Puttigen to get the keys. You can download the software from the article. Check the description. After downloading this app, open Puttigen. Click the Generate button and move your cursor in this area. Copy the generated key and paste it on Oracle Cloud. After setting up all of these click the Create button to deploy the server. Save your private key in a safe place, it is essential to connect the server remotely. The server is running now. Step 3. Open ports on the firewall for Virtualman. You can see, there is a link called a subnet. Right click on it, and open it in a new window. Click on the subnet name to enter the firewall section. You can open essential ports here, click the add ingress rules button to start. Enter this IP parameter for the source IP. It allows all IP addresses to connect to the server. You have to enter these TCP ports as the destination ports. Check the description, I will provide all necessary ports, you can simply copy and paste it here. Add another ingress rule by clicking this button. Enter the same IP parameter as the source IP range. At this time change the IP protocol to UDP. Enter 53 as the source port and click the add ingress rules button. Now we are finished with opening all the ports that are necessary for the Virtualman server. Step 4. Set up NAMA server for Virtualman. Next to this step, you have to point out the domain to the VPS. You can use two different ways to do that. The first one is to set up NAMA servers to the VPS, and the second method is heading manual DNS records. The easiest and the recommended way is adding NAMA servers. It gives full control to the Virtualman to handle all the DNS records inside the Virtualman server. The platform is different from different domain name providers, but the process is the same. First log in into the DNS management section of your domain name provider. I demonstrate this using a different domain name, but don't worry you have to follow the same procedure that I used here. In Namekheep switch to the advanced DNS section. Under personal DNS servers, you can add your NAMA servers. Click the add NAMA server button and select NS1. After that enter your server external IP address here. Once again add the backup NAMA server. This time select NS2 and paste your external IP address. If you are using Namekeep as your domain name provider, you have to do another step other than adding NAMA servers. But you don't have to do this in Godaddy. Switch to the domain section, you will see a drop-down menu in front of the NAMA server section. 
Select the custom DNS and enter your NAMA servers NS1 and NS2. Follow this format, check the article in the description for more details. After that save the changes. It will take some time to propagate the NAMA servers to the VPS server. You can continue the installation process. Step 5. Installation of Virtualman. You have to connect to the server using SSH. Copy your external IP address and open the PuTTY app to connect to the terminal. Paste your public IP address as the hostname. Under SSH, go to the Auth section and add your private key that was previously saved. Go back to the Session tab and save the session using any name. This is very useful when you connect the server again. You don't have to enter credentials again. Type Ubuntu to proceed. Get root access using this command. You can check the available memory first. See whether it includes a swap file. This server does not have swap space. We have to add one before the actual installation. The swap file provides additional virtual memory to the system RAM. It speeds up the server. Copy and paste this long command from the article. It automatically adds the swap space to the server, but it takes some time to process. Check the available memory again. You can see the swap space is added to the server. Next, update the list of packages of the server using this command. After that, you have to set the hostname. You are unable to enter the main root domain as the hostname and use the subdomain as the hostname. Enter this command to set it. Remember to replace the subdomain with your domain. You can check the hostname using this command. It is set correctly. The initial server setup is over. Next, you can install Virtualman using this command. I have already run the setup, copy and paste the command from the article. Check the description. Type Y to proceed with the installation. This installation takes some time to finish. I paused the video to save time. After installation, you will get this screen. Oracle Cloud installs an IP table inside the VM instances. You have to enter this command to bypass it, otherwise, it is unable to connect from the web. I already executed the command here. You can use this URL format to connect the server, paste it into the web browser. If you see this warning sign, installation is successful. Don't worry this happens due to the missing SSL certificate in the server. We can add it later. To enter the webman control panel, click advanced and select accept the risk and continue. This is the login window of the control panel. Let's set the root password to the server. Go back to the terminal and get root access. Enter this command to set the root password. Enter your password here and confirm it re-entering. It is not visible due to security reasons, just type and hit enter. The installation process is finished. You can close the terminal now. Step 6. Initial Virtualman Configuration. Login into the Webman control panel using root as username and root password as the password. After the login, you will see this post-installation wizard. There are few simple steps, go through these steps carefully. Here select Run Domain Lookup Server. It is better to keep a virus scanner on demand. It is very important to run spam assassin server filters. If you plan to run the website on the same server, you can enable the MISCL database. Keep the MISCL password saved. It is useful for your website setup. Select your MISCL database size. I keep it as a medium because I am not going to run a very large website on this server. Enter primary and secondary NAMA servers here. This is different from what we said in the NAMA key. 
Don't worry about that, because I use different clips to build this video. All the steps are correct, and you can easily follow them. Leave the setting as default. Next, you can choose your virtual server here, and generate a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. You can use the default setting for that. During the getting SSL certificate, the server may be disconnected due to invalidation of the current certificate. To fix that issue you can refresh the page. After refreshing the page, you will get the same post installation wizard again. This time you don't have to manually adjust the settings. Because it's already saved in previously set settings. Simply click the next button and finish the setup. Step 7. Add necessary certificate for email server. After finishing the post installation wizard, go to the edit virtual server section. Make sure you enable the spam filter. If not enabled now. After that, you have to add an SSL certificate for all the services of Virtualman. Under Server Configuration, select SSL Certificate. In this window, navigate to the Let's Encrypt tab. If you use the NAMA server integration method to point out the domain to the server, you can use the first option. Otherwise, you have to select a specific domain to request an SSL certificate. It will take some time to get the certificate. Switch to the Service Certificates tab and copy the certificate for all the services available here. Now we are done with copying the SSL certificate to Virtualman. You have to generate a DKIM certificate for the mail server. Under Email Settings select Domain Key Identified Mail. Install the DKIM Generator app to the server. It will automatically create DKIM keys for the mail server. After that enable Sign Outgoing Mail and save the settings. You can see all the DNS records and mail server certificates including DKIM in the DNS section. Step 8. Create email user and send email. To add the new mail user for this server, go to the edit users section. Add a new mail user to send emails. Create an email account with a password, leave other settings default. Now, all set you can send email using this SMTP server. I use GMAS SMTP mail sender to test this. Enter your mail server details. If you use a root domain, your SMTP hostname will be mail. Your domain.com. Both username and email address is a previously created user email. Enter the user account password and port is 587. Change the security level to none and set the received email address. Click the test it button to send the email. Check your email account, the email will be received to your email. Sometimes the email goes to the spam folder. In future videos, I will give a better solution for a free SMTP server. Using that method, you can send 100% of inbox emails without going to the spam folder. If you any issues regarding the tutorial, open the question directly on the Minex community forum because most of the YouTube comments are missed from us. Hope you enjoy the video. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this. Thank you for watching Minex.